What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers back again for my real hip hop heads today. I bring to you a woman who needs no introduction, but given how big my mouth is, you can guess what's about to come next. Shay Noor is from the Queen City of Buffalo, New York, and in a city of 259,000 people, you could drop a nuclear bomb on it, but would not hit a better MC. The city that gave you Griselda has now given us the heir apparent to Queen Latifah, and at this rate, she's on her way to becoming the Serena Williams of rap. Your bag ain't big enough to catch a Shay Noor twerking for queens do not film such ratchet behavior. On the contrary, her popularity is ascendant specifically because of her lyrical acumen. This trust gang affiliate got songs Angela Davis could have marched to and shit Floyd Mayweather can enter the ring to. She got cuts to hold you down while you're holding down your block and songs to get you through that bid you might catch in the aftermath. Her skills allow her to delve deeply into the themes of love, healing, revenge, empowerment, arrogance, black nationalism, and street life all on one cohesive project. I have, in fact, crowned this game-changing lyrical juggernaut the number one punchline queen of all time. She holds the distinction of being one of the very few female rappers that dudes bump from the whip at full volume, as well as one of a very select group of artists who have only classic albums to their credit. MCs, when you see her coming across the fucking street, Shay is not good for a girl. She's better than you, nigga. You. She has now moved past queen status and will henceforth on this show forever be known as Shay Noor, the Empress. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to present to you for the first time on the Mike Power Show, the Black Widow of Buff City, a.k.a. the Buffalo Body Catcher, a.k.a. the Punch Line Assembly Line, and most honorably, the First Lady of TCF, Miss Shay Noor, is in the building. How you doing, Shay? I'm good. How you how you doing? That was that was one of the hardest intros I done had so far. <laughs> hey, I just try to give the roses, you know what I mean? And every word I said is something I'm willing to stand a thousand percent on. Fight me in the comment section. We in the front yard. So That's I know you got a busy day ahead of you. By the time people see this, the album will already be out, maybe a day already. Um, but you headed to the album release party. And we're so proud of you in the hip-hop community for everything you've done. I have to say off the bat, I'm a huge fan. And at this very moment, my legs is still shaking that I get to share a screen and have a conversation with somebody of your high caliber. So thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to have this conversation for the benefit of my subscribers. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Thank you for even reaching out and uh, being such a, a fan. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, I'm a fan. I'm about to I'm, a, I'm about to fan out in a minute if I don't just start getting professional real quick. <laughs> so let's go ahead. I'm lightweight sweating. You know what I mean? It's high as 95 degrees, but we just gonna power right through yeah, it. Yeah, it's a hot day. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so <laughs> Buffalo State of Mind, I believe, is off uh, um, your first album. I know you had a, a mixtape or something before that. I think we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what was the situation like when you? Uh, made the song and shot the video for Buffalo State of Mind? So I actually recorded, I wrote and recorded Buffalo State of Mind back in 2017. And it was on the first Thrill of the Hunt that I put out that same year. Uh, actually, that summer of 2017. Um, when I wrote the song, um, I didn't think that the feedback would be so crazy as it was. Um, but when I had recorded it and I showed my friend, he was like, yo, this is probably one of your best joints so far. He's like, you got to shoot a, a dope little video to it. So I hit this, um, this videographer up by the name of D Hawks. Um, he, I think he from out here in the falls, but I think he was living out in Lockport or whatever at the time. And, um, I had met up with him and he, he did like a treatment for me. And just from him hearing the song, um, the treatment that he put together was going to be like, kind of just based around, the, you know, loosely around the movie belly. So he said he wanted he was gonna do like a um a, a video inspired by the movie and put clips in there or whatever. So when we shot it and I got the first draft back, I was like, oh, this is this the one. This one of my best and high, you know, one of my best quality videos so far. So when we put it out, ended up going like a little viral on 
Facebook because I think it got like, I think it had like 40,000 views, like over a thousand likes. So um, that was actually at one point one of my most viewed videos on YouTube. Um, it, it, I think it's now at like 20 something K, but at the time it was like one of my most views. I think it had like 10 K, um, like by the, by 2018 or something like that. But yeah, that was like one of them joints that I, I put out years ago and it's still to this day, like just going, you know, going higher. And that's actually one of them songs that introduced a lot of people to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you started racking up those views for that video, what was going through your mind? I just was like kind of floored. Like I wasn't expecting it off that joint because it was like a freestyle. So yeah. I was like, that's dope. I mean, you know, <laughs> I was, I had put out a mixtape the year before, like in 2016. And, um, I had a couple videos for that. Nothing big. Um, I was actually expecting those joints to, you know, the view, view viewers, viewers only knows to go up a little more, but, um, I don't know. It was dope. Like, I, you know, I guess they just was just fucking with like what I was saying on there, my flow and just how I was delivering it. Absolutely. And, uh, I saw that you, it's a, a video you talked about. You sold your first, uh, mixtape, um, was it called poetic thoughts? Um, at a place called uh, King City Flea Market, you made a you made a hundred dollars that mm -hmm. day. Is that story correct? And um, what was your typical day well, like back then in, in terms of that? Before you went to that flea market to get your stuff sold. Well, I sold CDs out of out of King City on Bailey Street in Buffalo. I had a spa out here in the Falls um, that's on Porter Road called Fashion King. They didn't move it now, but it used to be on uh, Porter Road out here in, um, in the Falls. I made my first hundred dollars off of mixtapes selling mixtapes out of there. Now I went and took. I used to take like merch and and CDs and stuff to King City. I ain't never really make no money out of there, but I, I was making a lot of money out here um, in the Falls though. I made my first hundred dollars. I ain't, I wasn't making crazy money, but I made my first like hundred dollars just selling my CDs out of Fashion King, and then I, you know, was doubling back, bringing some joints to King City. So, were you working a nine to five, or had you kind of settled on going hundred percent on hip hop by that point? No, I was still working. I was still working. I just quit my job really last year. What what was job? What kind of job? job was that? I was working at a hotel. Okay. All right. Uh, you was yeah. one of those nice, nice people at the front desk to help me get my room key and all that. No, nah, it's a, it's a coffee shop inside the hotel. I was working at the coffee shop. I used to work um, in housekeeping. I used to do housekeeping at a hotel, at the hotel, that same hotel. And then they moved me up to a different department. Um, cause they was doing some like budget cuts down there. So they moved me up to the coffee shop that was in the hotel. And I was working there for like a few years. Lovely. Okay. Um, why did you call the album Thriller the Hunt? It, it was a Pusha T lyric. I can't remember what song he said it in. He he said, uh, it's the thrill of the hunt. I got my mantle ready or something like that. And my friend actually suggested it to me because he was like, that just kind of is catchy as hell. So I it, it honestly was just the Pusha T song. We was just chilling, listening to it one day. And um, I think he had texted me about it. Um, he had texted me and was like, I think you should name your, your mixtape this. And, um, and then like last year, that's when I, that was really like my idea to turn it into like a series. Cause I, I wasn't, I was going to just kind of leave that on alone, but then I was like, nah, let me do a thrill of the hunt too. And just kind of like do a continuation series of it. Got you. Um, on thrill of the hunt, you do something that I tell people never ever to do. Um, you jumped on some classic beats, uh, like, uh, can't, uh, can't you see by a total uh, fabulous breathe? Um, well, band from TV, you jumped on that. I listened to that joint, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Really? She going on all these classic joints?" Um, did you purposely spit over those classics to prove your point about uh, prove a point about your skill level and confidence? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's how. I mean, I grew up in that era where my favorite rappers was hopping on classic beats and ripping them shits. Like that's that's where I come from, and that's really how I got into rapping. I I was rapping over industry beats. Mm. Um, I was doing freestyles. I had mixtapes out where I was rapping o over industry beats. Um, well, not really mixtapes, but I was putting like freestyles out like on SoundCloud. Um, if they still up there, cause I don't know if, it, if the songs are still up there, but if you go down my SoundCloud, it's like mad freestyles. I used to put up there. I did like a shook ones freestyle. 
I did a So Ghetto. That was my first freestyle that I put out. I don't know if it's still on SoundCloud, but it's So Ghetto, Fire Squad joint. Like, I I had me a few joints that I put out, but that's how I came in, like, just rapping over industry beats, proving my skills, like, bar-wise. Like, when I used to do showcases out in Buffalo, they used to have a um segment, like, a cypher segment, like, the DJ put on a beat and you got to rap over the beat, like on the spot type shit. So yeah. I come from that. <laughs> I mean, shook one's part too. I mean, it's almost like, you know, I've been around music for a long time in my life. You know, I, I grew up with it. And so sometimes somebody will bring something to me uh, and they'll be like, um, you know, somebody redid this Prince song. And I'll be like, listen, I don't, don't bring that to me because it's Prince. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not going to be better yeah. than Prince. You're just about to ruin it. So then when I start going through the album, and I was like, okay, can't you see? And then I heard the Breathe beat come on. I said, what? She about to try to go because it's Fab. Yeah. And you know what Fab, that's a yeah. classic. You know what Fab did. Fab. To <laughs> so nah. that was- no, that's a Fab. But you know, I just come from that era. Like, you know, Wayne, uh, yeah. you know, Wayne, G-Unit, all of them. Like, yeah. Fab was real big on that too. Like, they just... They get them a good, they get them a fire industry beat, a classic beat, and they get on that shit like it's there. <laughs> but I mean, you got the, we got the right MC to do it though. I mean, you got your, your skill level so yeah. high. So you handled your biz. It's about 99% of cats get on those beats and nah, it wouldn't work out. But um, the new album is, by the time people see this, the album would have been out by now uh, with Apollo Brown. How did you connect with AB? So Apollo hit me up last year after I dropped a little hunt too, and just told me he was a fan of my of my music. Um, and he told me that um, that he wanted to work, you know, collab. I thought he was talking about on just a song, but he was like, "No, I'm trying to do a whole album with you." <laughs> He's like, "I, I damn near already got all the beats ready." So, um, so you know, we talked on the phone. We traded uh, phone calls back and forth for like a month. And I would say, like, around September, he sent me the first batch of the beats. Um, it was 15 beats. He sent them in batches of five. And each batch that he sent, I just took my time. Like, rather, I took a month or a couple months writing to it. Because mm-hmm. what I do is I write. Sometimes I rewrite. Or I just ride around listening to the beats, trying to figure out what I want to talk about on them. But um, we just kind of linked. Like, he DM'd me through Instagram. And around March of earlier this year, um, I ended up flying out to Detroit. For a week and we worked on the album it took us like maybe two to three days to work on the album and um and we just kind of went from there and the album was done by the time i got done recording it was all mixed and mastered and they was ready to put it out like within a month so so y'all yeah, actually was how, in the lab together yeah yeah i, I flew out there to detroit in march and this was we'll, right before the virus had hit and what, what's his what's he like in the studio what's his process like he like me. He chill. He just, him, him, it's not too much. He don't like a bunch of people in the studio like me. I don't really like a bunch of people in the studio because it's hard for me to focus. I get distracted when there's too many people. Um, he chill. Uh, you know, he like to take his time. Same with me. Uh, yeah, he just, he chill. He ain't too much. He, he like me. Was that intimidating at all for you to be in the lab with somebody of, of that high caliber, a beat maker like that? Um, yeah, because he didn't want to hear none of the, he didn't want to hear nothing, like, none of the songs before we went and did the final session to record the album. Like, he didn't want to hear none of it, so I'm like, damn, it might be some joints you may not like, you know, I, I, even though, like, you know, I still took my time with my, with the songs, and, um, you know, it was some joints I was showing my friends as I was writing, and I did, like, I did draft recordings of them. And um, it was some joints that I was going back and rewriting, but I was like, you know, I mean, it's a collab, collaborative album. So if it's something that's not really sounding right, I would like his input on it. But he was like, nah, just come with what you got and we're going to go from there. Like, so, yeah, that, that was the only intimidating part because I'm like, damn, I'm coming and spitting some stuff that you ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's your first time hearing it. So, but uh, yeah, that was the only intimidating part. But he was, he was a cool dude. He fun, funny as hell. So. Freedom is crazy dope. Uh, it touches on current racial uh, injustice movement that's going on. Can you speak about your feelings surrounding everything that's going on with the with the whole social justice thing right now? Um, I mean, it's a continuous fight for us. It's a day-to-day fight that we've been fighting 
um, and struggling with it for years. Um, you know, I think it's more just about us educating ourselves as a people. Um, you know, I, I was I said something about like us learning how to um, learn the difference between individual racism and um, systemic racism, and yeah. just educating yourself on those things um, and 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 playing your part. You know, I done went to two two um, protests out in Buffalo since this happened. Um, I, I've spoke to Spectrum News about things that I hope to see change in my city and my community. Um, you know, I got some friends who sat down and spoke with ma the mayor of Niagara Falls and possibly, you know, trying to set something up to speak to Mayor Bry Byron Brown. Because, you know, we just had a situation out in Buffalo where this cop pushed this old man down and he was, you know, he ended 75 up... 75-year-old man <laughs> bleeding from the ear. Yeah, he was in a coma. I don't know if he made it out because um, I haven't been watching the news lately to get any updates in the past week. But, um, yeah, but this is something like the Buffalo Police Department has dealt with has always had uh races and, 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 and you know just a lot of ignorance in that in that department for, for forever. It's 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 a kid, his name is um well they call him Michi, but his name is Demetrius. He's actually um a friend of the family. He was he died in police custody a few years ago and they refused to do any investigating in that case. So this is something that believe uh, Buffalo police department has always been dealing with for years. But I said, you know, it's crazy. It took a viral video for them to start addressing these type of things in this department because, um, no, not no officers in the past have been suspended or investigated for behavior like that before it took this video hitting CNN and Byron Brown getting in front of these people talking for them to finally do something about this. So, right. you know, it's just about educating and doing our part. Like if you have a platform, use your platform to bring awareness to your fans, use your voice. Absolutely. No doubt. And, um, what about the prolifer the proliferation of videos featuring all these Karens that we starting to see. Have you ever had an encounter with a Karen and have you been able to spot one in the wild? Um, yeah, I've ran into some, I mean, I probably can't think exactly. Um, because again, like with this recent, um, climate that we're in of like, you know, a lot of these police murders being mur um, videotaped and going viral and we're seeing this, um, and, and a lot of like the Karen situations being recorded now. Um, I'm sure I've, I, I've definitely had some, some situations like that, but see, I always just chalked it up. Oh, that's just, that it is what it is. Like it, it was something that kind of was in a way brushed off. Um, I, cause I dealt with something I dealt with a lot of, I, I say this a lot. I dealt with a lot of racism or uh, systemic racism in the school system a lot, especially when I was living in Buffalo. I dealt with that a lot in the school system. Um, and those are things that it took me older and educating myself. That's why I say it's important for us to educate ourselves as a people. It took me getting older and educating myself and realizing that that wasn't right with that. You know what happened to me or what she said that was, I was, I was a victim of that, you know, that racist or, or prejudiced mindset. Um, I don't know. I, I've definitely had some encounters like that though, for sure. Yeah, I can tell you some stories after this camera go off. Some things I just, I'm not at liberty to discuss right this minute. But yeah. um, do, do you see yourself one day utilizing your talents to become more of an activist, an elected official, or a founder of a nonprofit, something like that? I don't know about no act. I don't know about an activist. Um, I don't know. That that's something that I would have to really think, pray, and because and, that's a field I don't want to play with. And that's the that's a huge thing I, I don't like that a, a lot of these rappers and celebrities try to do. They play with that lane, and you got to realize you are putting yourself in in the light, and you got people looking at you as a leader. You have to be serious about that role. Mm -hmm. That's why even like with me rapping, like I have a voice. Um, it's not just about yeah, I'm 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 a I'm gonna talk my shit every now and then, but I I have a voice, and I have a lot of kids. Um, that's younger than me listening to me. That's right. So I take this, I take it serious and, and I'm very, um, very strategic on, on what I use my platform for. Cause you've never seen me just squandering and bullshit and putting bullshit up on my pages. Like I'm always, I'm trying to bring awareness or even with my, my music. Like, yeah, like I said, I talk my shit every now and then, but I want to educate my fans and listeners as well. So um, with any path and lane that you get in, you just gotta um, 
it's something that you got to really, you got to take, you got to take precaution in that. So as far as being an activist, that's something I will really have to, I have to pray and, and really like, um, I have to be serious about something like that. And I do, I, I recently saw a very poignant freestyle that you dropped. Um, it was from the car, about a minute, 50 something seconds, maybe a little bit less about this very topic. The black and white one? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I thought that was yeah. incredible, and I, I hope more people get to see it. Y'all go look for that video because um, it's very dope. It don't got enough views right now, but when y'all see that, again, lyrically, she's going to blow your mind and educate you at the same time, and I, I certainly appreciate it uh, hearing your voice on that because uh, I think you wanted to – up and coming important voices, not just lyrically because of your skill level, because of just how you present yourself, which is something that we, I think we'll get into a little bit later as well. Uh, do you have family members or friends that have been uh, incarcerated? And what are those stories like? What have they told you? If, if you know anybody that's been incarcerated, what, what are their stories like, their experience? Yeah, I got a father and an uncle that's incarcerated. My dad been gone since I was 18 years old. Like, I'm 26 now, so I didn't been to Attica, um, plenty of visits up there, uh, Attica, Five Points, um, um, Collins, um, Elmira, like, I didn't, <laughs> I've been, I've been going to jail, I've been kind of, like, raised on visits, um, it's a lot of stories he would tell me, I don't really be asking him too much of that, like, when I do talk to anybody that's behind the wall, um, they got the JPay app now, I've been, you know, talking to my uncle and my dad through there, but, I don't really ask them too much. Like sometimes my dad is telling me there's been times where I've been at in the Attica room, um, getting ready to go in for a visit and they shut it down where they either shut the visits down because somebody got stabbed. I know a dude got killed one time I was there. So they shut visits down for the rest of the week or rest of the day or whatever. Um, you know, and I, I didn't been around that type of stuff. Like as far as those stories, I've been a victim of, uh, uh, you know, dealing with racism especially at Attica. It, it was bad when I was going, when, when I was, when he was still at Attica, he's at Collins now, but when he was at Attica, I dealt with it bad with the guards there. Um, you know, they'd pick, a, they'd pick at me. They pick at the girls on them visits about our clothing and what we wearing. Like you can't wear, um, you know, leggings or stretch pants or stuff. Like they'll try to, you know, say something about your jeans being too tight. Like they just pick at me for no reason about like little shit and tell me if I catch an attitude, I can't come on visits or he can't have visits for the rest of the month or some shit. Like it used to be bad, but, um, like treating you yeah, like you, I mean, treating, treating you like you an inmate. Yeah. It's been times where we was waiting outside um, in the heat, like how hot it is today. It's been times years ago where me and my mom and my sisters, we sitting out in the heat waiting in the line to get in and they catching attitudes with us, treating us like we inmates. Like it's crazy. Um, I dealt with that at Collins too. Like last year I drove up there to go see him and this lady was being like a bitch and wouldn't let me in because of my pants. I drove to a family dollar down the road, changed my pants. And she still told me I couldn't come in. Caught an attitude and she went off and told me I can't come back for visits and shit. Like they ended up getting it worked out where you know um, I was able to come back, but just dealing with that type of shit like that shit is, you know, that shit is stupid. But yeah, I mean, thank you for sharing that with me. I know I, 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 one of my questions later on down my list, but I guess we can get into it now. I mean, you talk pretty frankly about uh, family situations um, throughout, you know, some of your songs, and you talk about your father and some issues that he had with drugs how did that affect you coming up in buffalo having your father uh, suffer through an illness like that the disease of addiction um and then not be around mm -hmm. um i mean it was it was tough i mean i didn't been to countless na meetings um i didn't went and visit him at countless rehabs i told you i've been going on jail visits forever now um it's hard to see that. Um, it's not. It's not nothing easy dealing with. I will say, like as a kid coming up, when I was a teenager in high school, the um, you know, I, I thought it was something normal because I thought all kids was going through that. But what I, I had an embarrassing moment where a kid came up to me and said something about it when I was in school, mm. and that shit fucked me up. Like I, I, I was, I was traumatized from that because. Like, I didn't think that, I, like I said, coming up from where I come from, like, I thought every kid was dealing with a parent like that. But then I started getting other friends and going and venturing out and traveling a little bit. I started seeing, like, oh, no, they got two healthy parents in their household. Like, okay, so what I'm going through is not normal. Like, it wasn't, I was never sat down and explained what was going on. 
um, I, this is something I kind of like had to find out from other people. So, um, yeah, that, that was, I mean, it's an emotional roller coaster. Like, you know, I, I, I touch on this a lot in my music. Um, you know, just how, 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 you know, emotionally affected me. Um, and you know, this is why my music is so important to me now because I wasn't, I'm not one of the people that express how I feel about the situation. Mm. So my music is my way of expressing myself. Um, you know, this is my first time really addressing what even happened. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I wasn't one of them kids that grew up really talking about it. Like, you know, but my music, that's my way of getting getting across to him about, like, you know, how I feel. And even my family, how I feel. Because, um, you know, he's not the, the, the guy that I'm talking about. He's not my biological father, but he raised me because my biological father wasn't in my life. Um, but I, I don't. You know, that's, that type of shit don't matter to me. Like, you my dad. You've been in my life since I was one or two years old. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? But um, just dealing with that, you know, not having a bi my biological parent there, but still having to deal with the emotional effects of, like, you know, him being in and out the streets and, you know, him his him dealing with his sickness, that wasn't no easy shit to deal with. Um, and It takes away from your childhood. Yeah. Like, I didn't have a, a traditional childhood, so... So, and I, I know that you, there's a, a, a one or two songs you talk about your mother showing you some stuff that kind of, I guess, made you grow up a little bit faster and uh, a strained relationship with your sister. First of all, when you talk about that strained relationship with your sister, and I'm not thinking about, I'm not thinking of the song title right now. Is that the sister that you posted on IG that you were so proud that graduated? No, no, no. No, this is a sibling, uh... I didn't grow up with this sibling that I was talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't grow up with that sibling. Yeah. And then your mom, um, you know, how does your mom feel about you kind of putting it out there, like the family business a little bit on, on wax? I mean, you don't go deep and give all kinds of details, but you do give a glimpse into your family life. Is your mom cool with that? She she didn't get it at first because, like I said, I come from this whole family. Like, you know, it's a... It's, I think most black families have used this phrase, what goes on in the house stays in the house. So as a kid growing up, that's why I was just like so closed off and didn't talk about stuff that I went through because I couldn't. Like, I remember there's been times where I didn't have friends at the house and some, you know, shit going down. And I used to be scared to tell them what was going on. But I'm like, I don't want y'all looking blind or something happened. Yeah. Like cops showing up to the house and stuff and they... You know, so I'm, I, you know, I, I said, you know, this is what's going on. This is the type of family I got right now. Like, I love my family to death, but you know, like every family, we got some shit with us. But um, like she, she didn't understand it at first. But I had to sit down and talk to my mom and break it down to her. Like, you know, this is my only way of of me expressing myself. And you, and it's not even really, it's bigger than me because I look at it, it's way bigger than me. Um, growing up for me, music was my escape. Rather, it was like a two or three minute yeah. escape I'm getting from that song. That was my way of of escaping from my reality at the time. So it's people that DM me telling me that their music is helping them get through their day. You know, they, people can't tell me they can't. I had a dude tell me he contemplated suicide before. My music is helping him out of depression. That's heavy. Yes. Like, that's some heavy shit for me. So. It's like, you know, it's, that's why I say it's bigger than me. Yeah, I'm going to tell my story, but it's bigger than me. It's kids that's going through that or they've been through that, people that have been through that, that need to hear that. Yes. And it's Absolutely. coming from a, a woman. Because I don't, I don't remember growing up listening to a lot of, you know, besides Foxy, but I didn't really grow up listening to a lot of women that was talking about their life and their music. Mm -hmm. I, don't remember to, I don't remember listening to too many, like, that I can think of, you know. So that, that was, you know, it's, it's, you know, just it's bigger than me. Um, on on the song uh, "Hustle Don't Give," I hope I got the title right. Uh, was the, it was uh, that was the first single I heard off of this new project? Um, you had Black Thought on there, who was easily in my top ten, <laughs> dead or alive. Um, mm -hmm. Please go into detail about how that collaboration materialized. Okay, so Apollo, this was it was a beat. I can't remember what batch it was in, but it was a beat he sent me, and I waited so. Like maybe I was done writing about fourteen, thirteen or fourteen of the songs. I, I was I waited till the last minute to write that write to that beat because I couldn't I couldn't get nothing from it. Like the beat, I think the tempo was just a little too slow for me. So I hit a follow up and told him, um, 
you know, I, I can't get nothing to this beat because the tempo is a little too slow. Can you send another beat? Or wait till I get up there and we'll just, I'll just write it right there in the studio. So he ended up just sending me the beat. This was like a few days before I ended up boarding a plane to go out to Detroit. And that was the hustle don't give. He sent that beat to me and I wrote my verse right there as soon as I heard it. Wrote it right there in my living room. Took me like maybe a few hours to write it. Um, so I flew out there. We recorded it. Um, now I told you, when I went and recorded this uh, this album with Apollo, this was literally like a week or a few days before the virus hit and they started shutting everything down. Yeah. So um, when they, once they started shutting everything down, um, this is when we started reaching out for features. But a lot of people that we was reaching out for features couldn't get into the studio because everything was shut down. Um, and you guys, I guess, because... Uh, I don't know. I, I I got the studio in my crib, but I guess like some of the bigger studios, they were shutting it down because of the virus or whatever. Yeah. So um, he reached out. I don't know who he went through, but he reached out to Black Thought's people, sent the song. Black Thought heard it, and he said he fuck with it. He gonna hop on it. But he DM'd me on Instagram and was like, yo, I'm about to hop on this track with you and Apollo. And he just was like showing me love, like, you know, spit some games to me for a minute. I just showing me love and just telling me he fucked with me and telling me, you know, to keep going. Like, don't give up. Um, but when I heard his ver when I got his verse back, I, I just went crazy. Like, cause that was a, that was a moment for me because I'm still, like, I've been rapping for some years, but I just got my introduction into the game last year. Hmm. So for me to only be a year in and I got a black thought feature, that's crazy. Could have died right then and there, yo. Like, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. And he was on my list. He was on my list. Of I said this he last was. year at a show. I, I think we had a show out in Cali somewhere. Um, I think it might have been San Diego. Um, yeah, I think it was out in San Diego. I said it. I was like, I want to get Black Thought. Black Thought was on my list of like top three people I want to work with, and Black Thought was on there. That's like winning the if you like to to relate it to the NBA. That's like winning the championship ring your first year in the league. Like man, you want to work crazy. up to something like Black Thought. Like you want to be in there for mm -hmm. like eight nine years and finally Black Thought he showed up like a year later. Like you've been in the game a year heavy. Yeah, and he on, he's on your first single off of what is looking like it's gonna be a monster album. I heard. When I heard the first three singles, I said to my homie, Matt Stacks, he co-hosts the show, Expensive Conversation with me, shout to Matt. I said to him, and I was hesitant to even say this because sometimes people think I, I fuck with hyperbole and I really, really try not to. But after I heard, what was it? Uh, what's the song with the word gold in the title? I keep forgetting. Um, the third single. Worth gold, worth, worth gold. gold. Listen. Yeah, worth gold. I said, I told my dude, Matt Stacks. I said, I'm getting, a, I'm getting a Nas Illmatic vibe from this album. I said, if it sounds like this, if it continues to sound like this when it dropped, that's the way I feel about it. Because that was just the vibes I got. Oh, and wait a minute. Oh, oh yeah. And you, you say on, on the song 94 that Nas uh, debut dropped the same day you was born, right? April what? 19th, you said? April 19th, 1994. Okay. And... How important is Nas to your personal development as an artist? Oh, man. This man. That's... If I do, like, a top five and I do it in an order, Nas is number one. He's number one um, on my list. That, he, he does so much to me. Just his, his, his imagery, his, his, the way he tells story. I used to be a kid. They used to have his website. I don't know if they still got it. It's called AZ Lyrics, where they used to, um, like, have all the lyrics from every rapper, or every song that's out it's at the moment. Yeah. This was... Yeah, this was back when, like, they had LimeWire and, and you know, Air download share. music. But, yeah, but I used to go on there and print his lyrics out. And I used to be, like, reading his lyrics like it's a book. Like, the man used to say some crazy shit to me. I'm like, yo, this is, this this man is different. Um, But, yeah, Nas has a, has a huge, huge effect on just me. As an artist, he shaped me. His music has shaped me as an artist, for sure. That's incredible to hear. Um, and have you ever spoken to Nas yet? No. Hey. No, that that's... <laughs> listen, <laughs> that happens, yo, it's over. I might retire. <laughs> All y'all people that know Shay out there, y'all got some connect, y'all got some fun. Make it happen, please. Nas, if you Man. ever just get with the queen now, that we need this for the culture... Uh, 94 Man. sounds like it could have been on Illmatic. Was that purposeful? That's dope. 
um, we actually changed the beat because it was a different beat. He changed the beat up last minute. Um, it had the same drums on there in the same tempo, but he had to change the sample around. But yeah, like I when I heard that beat, um, my friend actually suggested it to me because I was listening to the beat and I couldn't like think of nothing to say or what because I was like with every beat for this album, my approach is different. I wanted to have as far as content wise, I wanted to talk about something different on each joint. So, um, you know, he he was he suggested to me. He was like, I think you should do like uh like do like a music based type of song. Like talk about your favorite rappers growing up. Like you know, kind of like get, tap into that nostalgic side yep. of your music. So, um, I tried it out. I remember um writing the first verse, and then I was like, okay, this sound dope. So I'm gonna keep going. Now it came. I had by the end of it, I had like two verses, and I was like, oh, this is it. We gonna we gonna go with this. And and um, at, I think at the end you you show love to cats who who was doing it. You said be, before you really was able to to grasp what was going on with hip hop a little bit before your time. Some of these guys have you gone back and listened to um, cats like Sugar Hill Gang, Cool Mo D, uh, uh, Big Daddy Kane, those guys. Um, I mean Big Daddy Kane, I didn't heard just because of my mom. Um, I want to say I sat and actually like ride around or sat and actually listen to their music. I ain't gonna say her and lie. You know, I give respect to them because they was before my time and I know they shaped, uh, you know, a lane that I'm so grateful to be in. But um, I can't sit here and say that I've actually went and actually listened to all of the albums. Have you heard Airbnb and Rakim's first album? The, uh, I have, and, and mainly because mainly because my mom, again, like, I've, yeah. I've heard that, yeah. Hey, the, the, yeah. you ain't listened to it in a long time. Go back and check out that Chinese arithmetic and just have your mind blown. That, that'll do for you what your music do for us, uh, just so mm. you know. Um, My mom put me on to, um, she put me on to MC Light. Like, this was, like, before I even started really rapping. Um, she she was a huge MC Light fan, so she put me on to her too. Like you know, I'm, it it was just like mainly I was listening to mainly what my mom was playing. But you know, you did have like I did have rappers from my era, like you know, more of um, that I you know was more listening to. But I always show them respect. Yeah, I mean, I shout to MC Light, mom. the legend. When I came up, it was Paper Thin and Ten Percent Diss. Had dudes going crazy. We never heard a a, a female spit so aggressively you know what i mean and you kind of are reminiscent of that yeah. quality do you you feminine but you got that brashness about you um it's kind of like the, to say i'm not to be fucked with and we appreciate that you you did a song with ransom called pray um is it not the yeah. case that you need to bring the heat when you get on the track with ransom um, I definitely gotta bring the heat with him because he he be going crazy. Oh <laughs> he actually one of my he's he's my he's one of my top five rappers right now, mm. hands down. Yeah, I <laughs> actually like I remember hearing his verse that he did on what album was that? I think that was Son of Cool G Rap or Son of uh, G Rap, Son of G Rap. Um, I remember hearing his verse on the song that him and Special. Yeah, it's like this dude is different, man. <laughs> crazy. You got to hear, if you yeah. haven't heard it, because you busy, you know, and a lot of times I get criticized because I haven't heard X, Y, or Z. It's so much good music out, I can't hear it all, but it's a song called No Introduction by Ransom. I don't know uh -huh. if you, oh my God, listen, the lyrics on there, but everything ran do. It's, it's like, the one song is like an a, encyclopedia from that dude. Like, you really love yeah, it, it is. when you listen to that guy. He digs deep. Yeah, it's crazy. And you he get the life deep. lessons. Like, he gives you that motivation. Like, he'll talk it's about very, He's it. intellectual. Like, yes. Yeah. And I love that about him. Um, And then it, he got he keep a nice line up on the beard. I, I know I ain't supposed to be talking about dude's facial <laughs> hair, but <laughs> I'm just, it should be sharp as fuck. I need, I need those clippers. You know what I mean? Um, but my shit, I just, I do it with the big. Um, you, you, you was on the song of Both Views with Flea Lord, uh, 38 Special. In the video, there was, it was Planet Asia, <laughs> Mussolini, Jay Black, Fred the Godson, Ty Ferris was in the video. Uh, what was the yeah. vibe on that day when y'all shot the video looking fresh in the all whites? Man, that was a vibe, man. It was like a family affair. Fred, Fred, the guy, son pulled up to Black Jesus there. Like, it was a family affair. Like, that shit was amazing. It was a great vibe. Uh, you know, I just felt I felt protected by my black brothers for real at that joint. Like, it was it was a dope. It was a dope. It's a beautiful, beautiful video. I don't know whose idea was it to have all y'all in white, but that was the perfect touch. Um, that was all special. 
Wow. That's all special. Yeah. yeah. Special got that vision. And I mean, I think we're going to mm -hmm. get to special here in a minute, too. I know I got some questions on special. M Mantra is a bit saucy, right? The first verse, you go on that nigga's throats on that song. Um, do you feel a kind of way when, did you feel a kind of way when you wrote that? Or is that something that just needed to be said, that first verse on Mantra? Because you seem... On Mantra? Yeah. Yeah, this was another yeah. one that was back. This, I wrote that dream back in 2015. Like, wow. Uh, I think the video came out 20, I think the video came out 2016, 2017 or something like that. Um, yeah, that was from my first mixtape. Like, I was just on some hungry shit. Like, I had a studio that I built at my friend apartment out in Buffalo. And it was a studio apartment, you know, we had with the limited money, the funds that we did have, but we put some shit together and I just was hungry, like trying to elevate, get up about that situation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not that it was a terrible situation, but you know how it is when you first start out with any dream, uh, yo, your goal is to elevate. So I, I just was, I was super hungry at the time. So I just was coming for anybody. I used to tell you, I was doing mad showcases at the time too. I was doing like two or three so showcases a day. I mean, not a day, a week. Like, I was doing, like, two or three showcases a week, um, um, tr you know, just knocking them joints out, uh, but just hungry, extra hungry at that time. I was looking at that video, and then I'm, I'm sometimes something that hit me so hard, I have to stop. My girlfriend don't listen to too much rap, but sometimes I got to stop and be like, yo, did you? I said, look at this video. Listen to what she doing here? I said she seemed kind of salty, like, like she got a chip on her shoulder. She, yeah. I'm like, damn, she she mad? Like, what the? You know what I mean? I would never want to get on your nah. bad side. You know what I mean? Not lyrically, you know what I mean? But the fun yeah. questions is over here. That's why I be looking over here at my fun questions. People know that they they might get used to it by now. Um, with top five knobs nah songs of all time. Okay, so we're gonna go with the message, of course. Hmm. We're going to go Gave You Power, Black Girl Lost, New York State of Mind. It's hard to choose just five, but I'm going to put Stillmatic in there, the Stillmatic in intro. Oh, my that, God. That's one of my favorite intros, too, yeah. <laughs> you mean, um, um, damn, Heart of a King, Blood of a... That, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stillmatic I can hear the beat intro. in my head. and the, I used, It used to be the first song on my mix cd when i used to ride to work and i just can't remember it mm -hmm. now but it's so it's so aggressive uh man it, it reminds me of mantra because he seemed like he got a chip on his shoulder on that intro too yo um mm -hmm. you know mastermind is probably on my list uh up there um second childhood you know black girl lost of course and like second you said childhood. <laughs> oh my god second childhood second childhood <laughs> That shit was different. It's stupid. It's stupid. Of course, I gave you power. And it still <laughs> applies today. Like, I, that's some shit that's going to apply forever because you ain't going to never get rid of people like that. <laughs> Yo, I love the way they even did the beginning of it with the girls talking. You know what I mean? Yeah, he going to be talking that old back to Africa shit. And it's like, yo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he put it out yeah, there. Yeah, it's crazy. I got another fun question. Um, Let me see. Do you get male groupies in your DMs? Oh, yes, all the time. Really? <laughs> Let me shoot. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> can, you give me a, can you give me a story about maybe the weirdest male groupie that came in your DMs? Um, I had this dude during Ramadan, like, who was, like, in my DMs, like, telling me I'm not even supposed to be reaching out to you, but I'll sacrifice myself for you. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that shit kind of crazy. But, um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have dudes ask me on dates, like, just be saying some inappropriate shit, like, yeah. definitely, like, uh, yeah. Listen, and and I'm just going to assume that all these dudes that DM you, n nothing ever went past, you didn't... Oh, no, I don't do that. Hell yeah. no, nah, I'm too paranoid for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. You got to get a feel for somebody face-to-face, -face, somebody you meet in real life, yeah. none, of, none of this internet shit. Um, no. Let me make sure I'm on my right page here. Some songs like uh, Sharp Steel with Special El Camino. Mm -hmm. um, do, is there a, some advice that, that ladies, that you can offer the ladies, you can give some advice that went through a similar situation as you? Because you kind of come from a tough situation, 
but you know, the light is shining on you now. It seems like you're starting to break through or you didn't made it through. Is there some advice you can give to the, to these young girls that look up to you? Oh man, just be, be yourself, be comfortable in your skin. Don't let nobody tell you what you got to look like and how you got to dress. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, just be yourself and be comfortable. Um, be comfortable. That's number one. Um, but be comfortable in your skin. Um, you know, I'm still, it's still a lot that I'm figuring out, so it's not too much I can give, but that's one thing I can give, because I, I definitely dealt with people telling me um, a way that they think I need to look, or how I should look, or how I should dress, and, and, and for me, once I got to a point where I was like, well, it's not about you, you're not the one I got to get in front of these people and be in front of these cameras, so I don't want to be looking at pictures and videos where I look uncomfortable, because it's like this is some this is some shit that years from now I want to be able to show my kids like you know like mommy was out here doing it so I want to be comfortable I don't want it to be no ugly memory for me so I'm just all about being myself. Um, and I'm not gonna front and, you know, like yeah I, I said this before that I hope nobody take offense to this when I say this but and this go for guys and girls I, I've said this before so sometimes I will see pictures of grown women. They'd be like 30, 35, 40, whatever. And I will see a picture of them. And the picture is them like squatting and looking over their shoulder. It's like a booty shot. Uh -huh. And I said uh -huh. to, to many people, I said, do you know what I, what I don't have in my life? They said, what? I don't have one picture of my mother dropping it low. I don't got, uh -huh. I don't no No picture exists of my mom showing you her booty. It don't exist. Uh -huh. Um, So... Yeah. I hope that people take that as like a cautionary note. Like when you, our, our sisters are so much uh, more than they booties, you know what I mean? Or what they look uh, like. You talk about this a lot that it's about what's going on upstairs. You talk about that on multiple songs yeah. about no one knowing mm -hmm. what you're worth a song like, and I might have a note on here. I think the song uh, Fru fruits of fruits of my labor is uh -huh. a song that touches on some of those things. I think that's a very, very powerful song as well. Um, Let's talk yeah, about because I, I I grew up around a lot of like OGs, like you know people, men and women who had a name out here in Buffalo or, or really in Buffalo, um, who did, who had a lot of wisdom that like I was like eleven, twelve years old, like a kid, like chilling in the car, they on a block or whatever the case may be, and they they spit game to me young, like. Probably younger than that, like nine, ten years old. Like I, I was young getting game because I was the oldest in the house, um, and and I was always just like the cool one to kick it with, like all my uncles and like you know my dad is just telling me like you just was the cool one, like to kick it with because you ain't really you ain't wine, you ain't you know what I'm saying you stay you just you chill like, um, but I was young getting a lot of wisdom early, so I didn't understand at the time, but now I'm grown, I get it. And I'm starting to put the pieces together now, so that's I, that's why I know like it's it's more about your your intelligence, and you know that's something I was always taught growing up, Absolutely. And especially from my mom. My mom, my mom has always um, made a point to tell me like you know just um, make sure you you mentally right. You know it's not always about looks because that shit don't last forever, but your wisdom that's something even when you die it's going it still lives on. Absolutely. What you said, not what you looked, not really what you looked like. What you said is what lives on. Shout to my dukes too. You know what I'm talking about.